and producers are looking for a new leading man. Hey, Hollywood, I'll tell you who'd be great in another big trouble little China movie. Kurt Russell, you dickheads! <laughs> producers are hoping to get The Rock, because he's too actually for Benedict Cumberbatch, and Hollywood only knows of two actors. <laughs> uh, but at least it's not Jeremy Renner. Jesus Christ, I googled Jeremy Renner and it said, did you mean any other leading man? <laughs> Every time I click my fingers, an old film, a foreign film, and a new film have their rights acquired and a greenlit for remake in Hollywood. <laughs> At this rate, five, seven years, there will be no creativity left. Something must be done, people. Let's make remakes history. <laughs> Uh, speaking of remakes and reboots, the fantastic Mad Max film opened, uh, angering lots of men. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Mad Max View Road, but there's girls in it. Ugh, girls. Stinky, smelly girls in an action movie. Ugh. Typical women ruining it for everyone by being in things. Some of the women in this movie had the audacity to neither die or get naked. Rubbish. <laughs> what were they thinking? I normally fancy Charlize Theron, but she's got half an arm and shaved her head. You can't wait to that. <laughs> Mad Max isn't even the hero. She is. Oh, it's rubbish. It's fraud, I tell you. Fraud. I was tricked. Tricked. Tricked in the scene. Tricked in the scene is Phil, which, fair enough, is an amazing film, which a 70 year old man has reinvigorated the action genre with an old school approach to action filmmaking, utilising almost entirely practical stunts and special effects while creating a visually stunning, technical and aesthetic, unusual film to the genre, coupled with a minimalist approach to dialogue, allowing himself to develop his filmmaking skills and to tell the story as a film, as a visual narrative, which it is after all. All the while treating us like adults who have intelligence and, and, and delivering a high octane non-stop thrill ride a cinematic spectacle on a whole other level of filmmaking, which puts modern digital po-face over on Dolphest to shame. I mean, to be fair, it's an amazing, amazing film, but there's girls in it! <laughs> Boo! Boo, there's girls in it! Uh, to be honest, I haven't really followed their arguments that closely. Uh, but it seems to be something about ethics in driving really fast in a post apocalyptic landscape. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, and finally, this month sees the return of the Sheffield Documentary Festival. Uh, I made a factual documentary film once. Uh, a factual documentary film. <gasps> oh, and you couldn't make it up. A <laughs> <laughs> so concludes the jokes in the comma of the week. <laughs> I'm sure that's been covered and probably covered here. The fact, you know, it's uh, Home Alone with guns, that's been said before. I don't really want to cover that, I'm sure it's been done to death. The real thing I want to talk about is what I think should perhaps have been a film in itself, maybe a, a sort of side film, is the journey that Bond and M would have had to take him, uh, to get from central London to Glencoe Skyfall in Scotland. I've done, I found out some of the stats. That is a 505 mile drive. <laughs> Which is about nine hours, right? <laughs> he is driving a 1964 Aston Martin DB5. Now, I'm sure you all know, but the Aston Martin 1964 DB5 has a, a fuel tank with an 84.5 litre capacitor. <laughs> Even a car that, which is running perfectly and is in pristine condition can only get, a DB5 can only get 15 miles per gallon. So I don't need to do the maths for you, but they're going to need to stop. Assuming that the car was full of petrol when he picked it up and central under lockup, they're going to need to stop a minimum of two times. Now, bear in mind that Bond is travelling with an 80-year-old woman. <laughs> they're going to be stopping a hell of a lot than more the time than two. So what I did was, last night, I actually sort of, I planned out the route that they would be taking um, <laughs> from central London. Now, I, I did it from the MI6 building, and I know that they left from nearby the MI6 building. Um, the, the funny thing is, um, he would have obviously used a sat-nav, uh, or some sort of spy sat-nav, I should imagine. Uh, but um, I, I, I quickly typed in from MI6 to Skyfall. Now, there is a Skyfall Productions Company, which is a five-minute drive from the MI6 building. I'd like to think they drove there first before Bond went, no, this isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. There's no way this is a ten-minute journey. Uh, we're not, this doesn't, doesn't look anything like Scotland at all. 
Um, so I looked it up, and uh, I've actually broken it down into what I think um, how the journey may have gone. Okay, so hour one, Bon explains his plan to M. She looks confused. It's a lot of information to take in, to be fair. No guns, you say, she says. <laughs> hour two, conversation has drifted. Bon, bon senses M is restless as she starts fiddling and complaining about the bumpy ride. Bond jokingly threatens to hit the ejector seat. They decide to make their first stop when M's request for a sucky pep mint is responded to negatively. <laughs> Hour three. Conversation becomes awkward after M asks Bond if he is seeing anyone. Bond responds, no, they're dead. <laughs> M responds, oh my goodness, who? All of the men. All of them. <laughs> Hour four. M asks if the woman in the sat nav can hear their conversation. <laughs> Hour five. Conversation again stops. M insists she has a dry throat and needs to stop for some honey lockets and a tunnock's tea cake. <laughs> Hour seven. I spy game breaks down when Bond refuses to crack and give any information about what he has, can, or will see in his reply. M says, keep it light. Bond says, R, for road, for the sixth time. <laughs> Hour eight. M asleep. Bond uses this to play the game where you close your left eye and open your mouth, then hit the rumble strip, so when your passenger wakes up, they think you've fallen asleep at the wheel. <laughs> Which I don't know, it's basically this, you close your eye, you go slack jaw, terror. If you haven't done it, recommend it. <laughs> Hour nine, arrival at Skyfall. Hour ten, everybody is dead. <laughs> That is the end. Thank you very much, my friends. <laughs> now it's time to bring out our special guests uh, for the podcast. Will you please uh, welcome Pappies? Oh! Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, welcome, welcome to the podcast. Uh, what a treat! Thank you so much for coming. For the benefit, for the benefit of those who maybe don't know who you are, could you explain to the people who, who you are? Yeah, I'm Tom. Oh, okay, you're just going to do yourself. We're a sketch team. We're a three-man uh, three sketch team. We're also in the... Uh, <laughs> I thought we were going to write names first. <laughs> so that the listener at home knows we're, we're each one of us by our tones. <laughs> by the tones? Yeah. Yeah. I thought you said you was Tom. I'm Tom. Where do you get Tones from? <laughs> um, Your Tones. I'm Tones. I'm Matthew. And I'm Ben. Uh, and we, we, we're pappies. We do we do sketches. And we're also uh, we're also from the sitcom Bad Ops. Yes. Feel <laughs> the excitement to the room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. So obviously you're here to uh, talk about movies and stuff. So have you always have you always been fans of films? Yeah, yes. always, always. <laughs> but it sounds, it sounds, more, it sounds, sounds, sounds like a worse question because three of you are all just going, well, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and actually, I think actually now you think about it, it's quite, it was quite fundamental as being friends because me and Ben grew up together and we really bonded on, as you do when you're like, we weren't really sporty and we were 11, so we bonded on films and we used to have sleepovers where we'd watch loads of films together. You used to dream of those days when you get into a 12. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. In fact, first 12 we got into was Broken Arrow, do you remember? Oh god, oh, yeah. Yeah, Broken that Arrow. Was, that was I don't know what's happening. Yeah, and we were, so, and we were like, it's John Woo. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. John Woo, Christian Slater. Christian Slater, John Travolta. All, all the good girls. Yeah, everything. Samantha Mathis. Yes. Yeah. Gordon Quelly. But like, <laughs> like Ben and I bonded on like our love of like Bill and Ted uh, and Wayne's World and all mm. that kind of stuff. And I went to university and Matthew met Matthew. Matthew was studying film. And he could get me into his film lectures. He could get you into 12s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a beard. That was the yeah, way I was. Yeah, yeah. I'd also buy you booze, cigarettes. Yeah. Well, you, you'd you. Get, I'd be able to come and sit with you in your film lectures and watch films, wouldn't I? So, yes, so yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Could, So uh, you got to see... Um, yeah, I've really... Broken Arrow. Arrow was the first film we did. It was upsettingly. Broken Arrow. In fact, I wasn't studying film. I was just studying Broken Arrow. Yeah, you know what I mean? In fact, it's 
the only film we've ever seen. It's the only film we've ever seen. Every weekend we get together and watch Broken Arrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrible film. When we do our scenes, it's going to be three different scenes from Broken <laughs> Arrow. <laughs> oh, I wish they'd gone that way. <laughs> I gotta tell you now, I've not, I've not, I've not seen Broken Arrow. So, well, treat yourself. I've had it prescribed to you by two people who've seen it many times. So that's, uh, that's all right. It's great. It's got the great line. Uh, what's it? You are very correct with the great line, which is, uh, I'm not sure what's more worrying that this happens or this happens so much we have a name for it. Yeah, that's right. That's very right. I have literally only ever seen it once. I've seen it once. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's what, what are they talking about? The, uh, well, the Broken Arrow is the code name for lost nukes, isn't it? It's yeah. the code name. It's the government code name for yeah. we've lost the nuke. Terrorists have got a nuke. And Travolta's the bad guy. Travolta's the bad guy. Yeah. You know? Life imitating art. Oh, shake it. <laughs> Travolta's always the bad guy. Yeah, you Travolta. <laughs> oh, Broken Arrow. Uh, cheer if you've seen Broken Arrow. Yay! Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Cheer if you haven't seen Broken Arrow. Yay! Yeah. 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 See, they're much more. They're much more. They're much more. It was very much kind of like, um, like when people talk about telly on, like, Doctors, you know, like the you know, yeah, yeah. Doctors is like the training ground for TV directors who wanted one to do East and stuff. This was flying doctors, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like it was very much John Woo's doctors, so that he could go on to do Face Off. That yeah. was like his East Enders. <laughs> <laughs> that is a phrase that's never been used before. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you, do you write for Cat Hager Cinema? Do you write for, <laughs> do you write for Science and Sound? Because. Uh, He's got some incredible insight there. <laughs> Nouvelle Barks, yeah. Tom Parry there. <laughs> John Lewis John John his feet in Hollywood. John Lewis yeah. made some terrible American films. Tom Lewis made so many great Hong Kong movies. His American films are largely all a bit yeah. rubbish. Do you love Face Off? I like I don't like Face Off. Oh, it's too I annoying. Love, I, loved it at the, I loved it at the time, but I think if I were to watch it again, I'd probably hate it. Ah, come on, come on, stick to your guns, Clark. We love Face the Off. Thing I miss, the thing I misdescribe with my autistic gene, because I don't have any autism, but the thing that basically makes me a dick about internal logic makes me hate it because I spent the whole time going, there's no bruising. They don't look even the same. Right? And then, and then oh, they, they, have to, they have to invent a secret prison to put him in because there's no other way of getting him out of the plot for 40 minutes. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, like when you watch Deadwood and you go, let's give him kidney stones so he can't be in it stopping anything. It's one of those sort of terrible plot devices where you kind of go, oh, you just haven't got a better way of running him out of it. I mean, the whole film is a terrible plot device, yeah. in all fairness. <laughs> but the thing is, when <laughs> something stupid is running, I'm watching a film called Faces where they swap faces and I still have issues with, like, <laughs> you, know, you know it's not a very good film. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I was fine, I could go, you know, I'm fine with that, but uh, there's just, that's just too much. <laughs> so you'd rather it looked more like Silence of the Lambs? Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? It would be a horrifying <laughs> film. It was like blood pouring out from either side. It was more like the fly, and then gradually just sort of the swelling came up, and it was horrible, and they were like, my fan, not really my fan, you know. Have you seen John Travolta recently? I think yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the swelling has started. It's <laughs> caught up with him. His face is rejecting itself. <laughs> Yeah, so kind of a second, though. Yeah, kind of a second. Do you remember uh, a point in your life, obviously it's a question to all three of you, like individually, when you sort of watch the film and you go, fucking hell, that's amazing. It is a broken arrow. Where do you think, I like films more than perhaps just a casual sort of, you know, thing that makes you go, I fucking love yeah. movies now. Um, my, my cinema, especially cinema, like I can remember very clearly going to see Jurassic Park on its opening night. The, the cinema was full. It was the first time anyone said, you've got to move along because it's sold out. Um, I'd just been absolutely blown away. Well, right. apart from tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, so, so my, my Jurassic Park, and I thought, I like, the, okay, I just, I like the way what? you call it, it's opening night. Like at the end, the dinosaurs all came out of a curtain call. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The T-Rex caught a bunch of flowers, which is very hard with this. Gold blue there. Okay, cinemas. <laughs> Bend the <bridge. laughs> So, like, for me, it was like Jurassic Park and then The Matrix. I remember sitting there and thinking, what the fuck is this? And being completely blown away. Me and you, me and Ben went to see Lockstock. And I can remember, like, that, because now I look back at Lockstock and think, yeah, that's Lockstock. But we were blown away by yeah, Lockstock. Yeah. yeah, Lockstock, the first, the first oh. bit, when it, when it goes slow motion. That slow first motion bit. in the cinema. Oh, yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah. Oh, and my God. Like, being, like, 18 and thinking, we used to sit up and play poker games, you know, go and our friends and be like, oh, we're going to play poker now. And, like, watching Lockstock was like a, it was like a teenage wet dream. It was like this yeah. big homoerotic wet dream of like, oh my god, it's a gangster film, and it's a British gangster film, and they're playing poker and ah. Dexter Fletcher's in it. Dex <laughs> Press Gang! Press Gang! You games master! I'm sorry, where are you getting the homoerotic thing from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Sherlock Holmes is his foot blown off, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's just like a really kind of 
you know, very British. But also, like, loving British gangster films and loving British stuff, there wasn't a lot of good stuff. It was kind no, of, was quite yeah. mind-blowing yeah. at the time to kind of go, this is actually really good. Like, yeah. watch it, kind of go, I'll watch it, it'll just be another... Yeah. But I like ID, but you know what I mean? It was very sort of yeah. TV movie-ish at we, the time. We were know. slightly too old for Tarantino in that, like, we knew Reservoir Dogs should be cool and pop fiction, but I was, well, certainly I was, like, I wasn't allowed to watch it, and I kind of watched it eventually. Yeah. Are you too um, young for it? I was just, sorry, I was too young. How old are you? My Russell K. Masters. <laughs> 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 um, but like, I was just too young yeah. for Tarantino, so yeah. like... And I desperately wanted to be into Tarantino. So when Guy Ritchie came along, it was like, this is my Tarantino. <laughs> and it was like, oh no, you're not. Oh, no, <laughs> that's no, 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 Madonna. No. It was more your EastEnders, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they're mine, anyway. Yeah. Uh, opening to Boogie Nights, uh, yeah. which I, yeah, I've, I've, I've absolutely, absolutely love that long tracking shot. Uh, yeah. Whoa, 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 you got the best of my love. So uh, that was good. Uh, the first <laughs> film I remember disliking was uh, Teen Wolf. Uh, and I'm, that, that was a real moment for me because I, I realised I sort of developed a crit- critical faculty. You know that way when you're yeah. a kid, you're just, oh, okay, you know, I'll watch anything. Mel's house party, hello, hello, big break. That's my Saturday. I don't know any difference. Uh, that's just what I've just put. We'll consume it all, that's fine. Um, but I remember watching Teen Wolf and going, I don't think this is a good film. I've since watched it again, and it, it is actually a good film, but to, for the 10 year old me, it just didn't. Just didn't really work on so many levels. But there was that bit when she grabbed him by the tie and kissed him. Oh. And I was like, that is. The most sexual thing I've ever One of the reasons I got into amateur romantics, I think, was Team Wolf, when he joined the Amdrab thing, got off with the picture. So you get your knob out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Secretly get your knob out. Was, was that why you arrived at every, uh, every Amdrab meeting uh, doing a hand sound to the back? Is this your Jerry Levine? Is this, is this your Jerry Levine? I'm very much the styles of this <laughs> sketch group. Actually, you don't look a million miles away from Team Wolf's dad when he, when he comes to the bathroom door. So I know what, that's what he, he, when he does what? He comes to the bathroom door and he's, he's there, he's there at, uh, looking like a wolf. Oh, he looks yeah. like a middle-aged wolf. That's just, <laughs> oh, that is the worst thing anyone's ever done to me. <laughs> you look like a middle-aged wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, ben, do you have one that was your uh, perfect, your sort of inspiration as a younger man? I would say, uh, not including the ones we've already talked about, because obviously with Tom, I'd say for me, we we're, were talking about this this weekend actually, uh, swingers. Swingers. It's the big thing. Oh I was like, God. stylistically, yeah, yeah. I was like, I've, I've found who I want to be. Yeah. And we talked about it. We talked about like it. For ages. Yeah. yeah, and in fact, again, we've talked about this before, but it's films that are about losers that you think they're about really cool guys. Wayne's yeah. so, Wayne Wayne World, World Swingers, like Swingers, Garfield 2. Frost <laughs> <laughs> <Boss> Nixon. <laughs> um, Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly, they did <laughs> But they were quite stylish. <laughs> yeah, they were, and, and kind of, in hindsight, they weren't at all. But it was still exactly yeah. that. I was like, I want to be these guys. So well, I think bad. swingers was interesting because it's what I used to call at university, mainly to annoy other people I was at university with. Uh, we used to call it a prick flick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's definitely. like it kind of goes. This isn't essentially like what all men are like, but they were like chick flicks, which you don't like. So they're chick flicks. There's romantic comedies. And very rarely do you watch a romantic comedy and go, oh, I'm identified with everyone in this. Yeah. Usually yeah. handsome, confident people that have had a misunderstanding will eventually get sorted out. And you kind of go, oh, I can't really identify with that. You know, these experiences, you kind of go, oh, I know sort of what half these people are actually talking yeah. about. Because yeah. Because I have the same nonsense. It's actually nice to go, oh, is that a thing? I didn't realize it was, yeah. Yeah, it was just me. And so funny that we kind of we aspired to be those ladies. Yeah. So yeah. We went out and we bought we bought <laughs> yeah. a vest or a we bought a Hawaiian yeah, shirt. Sure. I did the same thing. Yeah. 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 And we wore them and like we called each other and we said like your money. Your money. Yeah. yeah. You've got to go and pull that girl when your money. They were uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were, when it came out there were some secret nightclubs in this yeah. where you'd go to that didn't weren't advertised and stuff, you'd go and they'd dance. It was like like now, like now, Lindy Hop really popular at the time. There was like swing clubs. You go, and it wasn't like weird and creepy. It was just like there were lots of people who could dance. They were just if you were a man or a woman, and you went dance with a man or a woman, they would dance with you because then you had to dance. You wanted someone, you needed someone to dance with. It was really sort of positive 
and lovely. It was like a great scene, like, even though you know the place is dead anyway. But it was like lovely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think we still say this place is dead anyway. Yeah, Always. Yeah, this place is dead yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. And me and Ben used to sit in the back of his uh, his dad's car, had like um, seats in the boot facing backwards. And um, when we first watched Wayne's World, we used to sit there, didn't we, and go Schwinn. So, like, and a pretty, uh, well, not even pretty girls, because we were like, what, like 15? <laughs> and, like, any woman would be honest with like, I, she's I'm a pretty bee. sure she's a bee, but she's being with Ham Lincoln. Uh, and we thought we were being really cool by like, doing it. Like, <laughs> hashtag everyday sexism. <laughs> 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 What did you think about Mad Max, Tom? I rejoice. In fact, I'll tell you what, to to say it's stupid, to finish that list of cinematic experiences, like, genuinely, we went to see Mad Max the other day, and I would put that on that list of cinematic experiences. I was blown away by Mad Max. I think that that deserves, it should be in the Oscars, it should be up there. Like, it's a phenomenal film. It's Essentially, he's made a silent movie. He's made a silent movie for the modern age that, Rejoices in like in all that kind of it's it's just so wonderful. I thought, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a, it's a kind of, yeah, it's the kind of thing. Whenever the credits roll on a cinema, I always think, and it's exactly the film you said. I always think, I wish this was either Jurassic Park or The Matrix. <laughs> like when it comes up, I'm like, any film. Oh, I wish I was, yeah, any, any, any <laughs> film. Like those are the films I go like, oh, I wish, I wish I was gonna watch yeah. that right now. And I, I think I'd, I would add. It's like when we see like, like, 20th Century Fox logo comes up, I'm always expecting he to cut to space because of those alien yeah, yeah. and like Star Wars. Every time he, if he doesn't yeah. cut to space after 20th Century Fox logo, I'm a little bit disappointed. And I'd say, yeah. I'd say I'd put gravity in there as well recently, where like I saw that 3D in the IMAX. And like, I think it's the same word I use with comedy that I like, which is audacity. That's what I really love, I think. When I see comedians and go, that is audacious what you're doing there. It's not necessarily funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily funny what you're doing. But it's audacious. And for me, that's what gets me. And like with filmmakers as well, that's the same thing when I go, that is absolutely audacious what you're doing right there. And, and for me, that's what gets me. That's what Mad Max was, it was yeah. audacious. You saw that brilliant thing in the uh, in the Independent about, was it the Independent that reviewed uh, Gravity? I <laughs> the reviewed Gravity yeah, yeah. and said, uh, there's a bit where you can tell that it's not even shot in space. And it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> There's a bit where you can tell that it's done in a film studio. This is that one scene where it's like that. It's like, well, you wouldn't have been able to film that because it's in space. Yeah, yeah. It's and like it's like, well, then that film has utterly succeeded yeah. because for a moment there, you thought it was being shot in space. <laughs> what are you doing? It's, it's done you, you know? I just thought it was phen- just phenomenal. So what other questions I understand, you know, because obviously you, 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 but you act as well as sketch comedy and stuff like that in your own right. You do stuff on your mm-hmm. own. I understand. So you have had some brushes, <laughs> some brushes with uh, film yourselves and some. Uh, Matthew, I believe you're in a film. Is that you've been in a, a film? Is that correct? Oh, I was. Uh, I was an extra when I was uh, doing my edit. Hang on, hang on. Don't do yourself down as an extra. This was an award-winning film. <laughs> what? It was an award. An, uh, so you were in the cast of an award-winning film. I was in Shakespeare in Love. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Very much. Oscar winner. Oscar winner, Matthew Crawford. Yes, uh, it's on the CD. I did uh, Oscar winner, Chortle Award winner. <laughs> <laughs> um, Edward Award <laughs> nominee. Um, Loaded <laughs> laughter nominee. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I did. Um, uh, my, my friend was helping a booking extras, and they needed some people to be. Uh, Kind of, it was people who didn't have a, have a lot going on, and all I was doing was my hair levels. Fine, I could take some time off, and uh, I got to do some days on set. And I, the, the, the best day was myself and my friend James uh, got to be boy players. So they dressed us up in these fantastic, um, by the way, boy players, it sounds quite gangster. It's not as gangster as it sounds. Um, but, but they dressed us up in these incredible, uh, uh, incredible uh, Elizabethan era dresses. We got to wear these long uh, blonde wigs and our faces made up. Oh, it was an absolute dream. Um, <laughs> but, but they said, as uh, Joseph Vines walks past, you've got to sort of nod as if to acknowledge him, but you can't say anything because we have to pay you more money. It's like five, it was like, I don't know, it was like 35 quid a day or 40 quid a day, but it's like 500 quid if you say anything. So we kept say, saying things, and they're like, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> you can't trick us in and give you 500 pounds. Oh, you got us. You did say hello. Uh, they said, please stop, because it's... Right, mate. Yeah, yeah. So we people. almost got fired on the first day, because you both were like, all right, no, you can you literally can't. Um, but, then, uh, but then after that, when I went to see it, um, they had dubbed a voice on. So they must have just got a guy to come in and do loads of hubbub, hubbub for crowd scenes and... 
And uh, so if you watch it, my friend, you can see my friend flipping on uh, a blonde wig, and then I've got my back to the camera, like a star. Um, <laughs> you, see, you see me nod, and you just hear, hello, Will. Which, as I've proven, I could have done myself. <laughs> But I'm also in the I'm also in the crowd scenes uh, for the Romeo and Juliet, um, but only unfortunately widescreen edition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right on the periphery. Yeah. Well, I need to describe the cinematic history because uh, in the early noughties, we were in a we were in a youth theatre in Wolverhampton, and we kind of graduated the youth theatre. And um, the woman who ran the youth theatre kind of served as like an agent for us. When I was at University of Canterbury, when Ben was jobbing around in Wolverhampton, we received a very early draft script uh, to go to audition for um, Sex Lives of the Potato Man. <laughs> <laughs> and there, but by the grace of God, go I, because we were very nearly in Sex Lives of the Potato Man. <laughs> Could have been so different for us. What was the, what was the role you were going for? Well, I couldn't audition at all. Tom was going for the potato. <laughs> <laughs> you were going for the sack. <laughs> did you audition at the end? Yeah, I did. What was the part? Was it Mackenzie Crooks? I have no idea. I can't remember. I thought it might have been Mackenzie Crooks. I think I've, somewhere on a computer hard drive, I still have a copy of the entire script of Sex Lives and the Potato Man. Yeah. Maybe that could be, in, you know, if you ever decide to go back to Edinburgh, maybe you could do that. <laughs> Amazing that that's, that's the worst thing on your hard drive. <laughs> from all those years. The most, the most obscene, obscene thing. Still thing. the most obscene <laughs> thing on your hard drive. Amazing. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, uh, yeah, so you did, yes, amazing. Did you, am I right, did you do an advert? I did. <laughs> is that right? Oh, she's done an advert. You done, I remember, I remember you did, you're like, you like, you like me, like, you're like, oh, it's been he's done an advert. So remember you used to be, uh, was you did the, uh, oh, Hannah, TV I did, no, didn't no, you? you no, bit, no, no, but there's a better one. But you also um, did the, uh, looking through the window for the weather thing, didn't you? Yes, like, I did, that yeah. That's yeah. 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 the first one. Ben's done an advert with Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood. I've done an advert. Hollywood, Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. The, uh, the oh, mayor of Hollywood. <laughs> I did an advert with the lovely Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what did you do? I had to follow him around uh, Budapest for a few days on a bicycle shouting at him. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a dream come true. Is it online? Can people find it? Because you can find it. Yeah. Ben's the star of the advert. Like Hugh Jackman's obviously he playing Hugh Jackman, but it's all about Clark Kent. And you act him off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for some reason it didn't uh, lead to anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to talk my like terms, you are very much the Russell Crowe to hear. <laughs> you drank it. I was very similar singing voice. <laughs> 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 you're singing, you're, you're super. And actually, Hugh Jackman's agent was interested in you, wasn't she? She was, she, she, like, she was for a sort for of a short amount of time. Yeah. For a while, they were talking about him going off to Tinseltown. Yes. M- Matthew yes, right. Lapland. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, talk, talking about acting roles, that was generally like the best that Matthew and I have ever acted because we were like, really pleased for you, mate. Hope it works out for you. Yeah. Oh, I always think, I'm so you know, <laughs> when I get turned down for acting, I always was ashamed that they never, when I had a real job, they never got to see me phoning sick. Because then you'd see some fucking Yeah, I just don't, oh, I just don't feel very well. I don't even know how to use that. I just don't feel so relieved to have this come. But what did you, back then, didn't you, did you tweet or text your gentleman and say, the advert time? Yeah. Was, what was it? Was looks great. Text? Looks great. I just wait. You three, uh, yeah, radio silence. No reply. <laughs> oh, no reply. Oh, I really thought, I really thought reply. we'd, uh, I really thought we connected. I thought oh. it was going to be a, a lifetime pal. Did you get a follow back? No. Nope. Oh, oh, didn't have that. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Still, he was a lovely boy. <laughs> What's he really like? <laughs> That's very nice. He was, he was genuinely lovely. Give us an example of like the chat. Yeah, what kind of what kind of bands did you have with Jack? Yeah. What were your Jack bands? Uh, <laughs> we just talked a lot about like what we do when we work out and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him, yeah, I'm all white together. It's also based on that as well. That's funny. Uh, we should get together sometime. <laughs> <laughs> um, nothing really. But we, we talked at, at, at some length about the anxiety we feel in between jobs. I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, come on, you. I don't think, you kind of know what you mean. I know what you mean, because, you know, uh, 
real steel is supposed to have been released, uh, but it's you know it's just sat it's just sat there, and I, I don't know I don't know what's coming next. I, I, was, I think you're gonna be alright. <laughs> Probably another Wolverine film. <laughs> I, I think to be honest, you'll be you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> No matter how bad it is, you don't have to go back to temping like I am. <laughs> it's not quite the same, mate. Oh, that's sweet that he kind of plays like, like no, that he's like. Yeah, he was. He was like, he was, he was, he was, he was nice. <laughs> <laughs> he was very nice. And now it's time for the hashtag game, where we play live a popular version of the internet game, the hashtag game. <laughs> I'm not going to explain it more than that. You know what a hashtag game is. Uh, so this time, because it's Pappy's for a sketch group, and I uh, used to be a sketch group which doesn't actually have an answer for uh, this game, but even so, it's, it's sketch group, so it's sketch groups, sketch group movies, sketch TV show movies. So I'll start with, um, in order of the headliners, uh, Pappiness. Good. Like, uh, nice. uh, strong. Strong, yeah. Uh, Lady Garden State. Oh! Uh, oh. Smith and Jones and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> Ash. I thought we didn't want it at a time. No, we'll do three. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got uh, Saturday Night at the Museum, live. <laughs> <laughs> Monty Python and other snakes on a plane. <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh, the Kids in the Hall Pops, starring Owen Wilson. Nice. Yeah. Are we, are somebody doing three now. Yeah. Uh, the Fast and the Furious Show. <laughs> The Hail and Place Beyond the Pines. <laughs> <laughs> the Frost vs. Nixon Report. Nice. That's good, that's actually about... It was, it was Frost, David Frost. That's yeah. clever. <laughs> um, Dirty <laughs> Harry Enfield and Chums. Um, I had, I had uh, Kids in the Hall Most Famous. Uh, which is, uh, and um, Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit of Fry and Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, the Real McCoy... Yo, T. Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> the Long Good Friday Today. <laughs> and Beyond the Fringe, you mangy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, was that an Iron Man Stroke Woman? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you've got Beta Mouse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Absolutely Beginner. Oh, I couldn't think of one for Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I got a uh, big train in Little China. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a bit of the fly in Lorry. <laughs> smack the baby warhorse. <laughs> uh, I got big trouble in Little Britain. Oh, nice. uh, the Cambridge Footloose. <laughs> Very strong. Very strong. <laughs> The Lonely Island of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. Um, I quite a few similar ones here. I, I had um, Stuart Little Britain. This is not strong. Smack the Polar Express. <laughs> All right, I'm not <laughs> I'm crossing that out. Um, did I do Meet the Armstrong and Millers? <laughs> good. I've got Smack the Pony Sidon Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good one if you don't understand this game. <laughs> Goodness gracious, Marley and me. <laughs> oh, retracted, retracted. French Connection and Saunders. Yes. <laughs> nice. You also have uh, Q Milligan, the Wing Serpent. <laughs> uh, kiss, kiss, titty, bang, bang. Oh, I had that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, Robot Chicken. <laughs> uh, Harry Enfield Haunting and Charms. Uh, too Fast, Two Ronnies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've only got one more left, which is the Armstrong and Miller's Crossing. Oh, nice. I've got <laughs> I've got two absolute shockers now. Um, this is this is not good, and it works better on paper. You know, Mr. Show. Yes. You know how to train your dragon. <laughs> Put those two together. It sort of works. Mr. Show to train your. It doesn't really. <laughs> Wow. 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 Mr. Truman Show. Ah, that's much better. It's <laughs> not as funny, but it's and more s- someone before someone before we started recording the, the podcast said that their favourite um, show was the, or the favourite movie was The Fifth Element. So the Fifth Element sketch show, the Keith Lemon sketch show, the Fifth <laughs> Element sketch show. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> can I can I shoot all my list and get yeah, rid of them? Yeah. The full Monty Python. Nice. nice. Big training day. <laughs> the Goonies show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Round the haunting. The haunting. <laughs> That's actually really good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Not the nine o'clock broadcast news. The comic strip tease. Strip tease. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Russ Abbott and Costello. <laughs> 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 Hail and Lost in Pace. <laughs> Hail and the Pacemaker, as in the Peacemaker. <laughs> Saturday Night Live and Let Die. <laughs> Beyond the Fringe, Anna Jones, and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 was, I was talking to Josh Whittacombe before this, and he, I said, well, I've got to come up with some of these. And he went, um, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail? That's not really how the game works. It's just a, there's an actual sketch in your main movie. It's not really there. You could also have a Space Jam. All yeah, the, yeah, quite literal. Yeah. Uh, how Stella got her groove back. And Charlotte's Mitchell and Webb. Oh, my <laughs> God, that was. Uh, I, I, can I apologise for my last three? No, yeah. stand by them. Uh, <laughs> genuinely calm. Um, Brenner, Birdman and Fortune. Yes. <laughs> now, these are the worst things that anyone said tonight. Uh, that was the 28 weeks later that was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was the week that was the day after tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we know it, guys. We did it. We did it. And so the hashtag day. <laughs> And now it's time uh, for part of the show where our special guests choose their favourite scenes for films, the favourite beginning, middle and ends for films ever. So before we get into films you've chosen, the scene you've chosen, were there any scenes or films you wanted to mention that you didn't sort of, you couldn't either put them into them too visual or you just didn't quite make the cut? Um, Sounds very obvious, but I think the uh, the last scene of the Italian job is one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. Like, it, it's, it remains the best way to finish a film. And we could, you know, and I thought you suggested that like, like all films should end that way. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best way to finish a film. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I, criticism. I think I think I think seven would have been improved immensely <laughs> by uh, <laughs> in the box being too awkward to reach. You know. What's in it? What's in it? Was it? Oh, I've like, still never seen it like as like a nine year old and like not being able to comprehend that a film ends without really ending and like it keeping me awake at night like. It's just, again, that old word of audacious, but I love it. It's also the classic thing because back in those days, you still couldn't really have the baddies win. Yeah. You know they're like when you like them. They are sort of the bad guys. So you couldn't actually have them get captured, but they couldn't have them actually get the goal. So it's a great sort of, it's a great sort of balance between what they have to do in cinema and what's a satisfying ending. Yeah. And so again, like, when you, especially when you're writing, when you, when you come to start writing scripts and stuff, like, when you think somebody sat there and wrote that and thought, that's how I'm going to finish the film. And you can imagine the discussions they must have had with the producers, with the director, with the stars to go, and to go, no, that's how the film ends. And like, no, no one would have read, like, the producer would have read that and gone, brilliant, yeah, we leave them like that. Like, someone fought for that ending so hard, and it's like, the, the fact that it exists, the, the fact that they, they put this film together, that's how they chose to finish it, means someone fought really fucking hard for it. And that's an incredible thing, you know? It also sets it up very nicely for a sequel that's set entirely in the van. It's like a cross between the Italian job and Peter Case Carpool. A romance blossom. It's called, it's called Good Idea Question Mark. <laughs> the Italian job is an amazing film because it's when you're watching your kid, it's great. And as you get older, it's still great. It never stops being great. You always yeah. see more things. There's very few, not, I mean, there's lots of classic movies like that, but it's lovely to watch a film you watch as a kid and go, that's brilliant. And as you get older, understand more about why it's brilliant. It'd still be brilliant. We went to the prison, didn't we? On, do you remember we were gigging? It was in Cork. We were yeah. gigging in Cork. And it, so yeah. we'll, we'll go and check, show you around the local prison. It's like a museum now. And the entire time they're going, oh, this is all how the English persecuted the Irish. And we're going, this is from the Italian jewel. So <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> bridge, <laughs> bridge, <laughs> bridge. <laughs> and this is where they lined up the prisoners and they shot them. Remorselessly, and 11 prisoners died against this wall. <laughs> Bridge. Self-preservation. <laughs> 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 it's also really going to go, who's going to be the villain of this piece? Noel Coward. Noel <laughs> Coward! <laughs> and he's going to love those, why not? <laughs> right, yeah. And he's brilliant. Yeah, he's going to go like, it's an amazing, you know, 
It's one of those things where it goes, it's almost like they did it properly. They went, we're going to end it like this, we're going to cast it like this, it's going to be, yeah, it's just an amazing, just yeah. great. Yeah, absolutely. But we're not doing anything from that. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favourite opening to any film ever? Happies. It is. Uh, Tim Roth. Glorious bastard. <laughs> it's Tim Roth who uh, we rewatched this scene. Turns out, not a good actor. <laughs> no, he was in Pulp Fiction. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the, it's the dynasty, the opening dynasty in Pulp Fiction. Just, which is great. I, do you know why it's unfair? And Tim Roth is good. I just think, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Tim Roth, but uh, mostly for his work with Alan Clark and Mike Lee. I think uh, one of the reasons we, one of the reasons this scene means a lot, I, I know, from very personally as well, is like, the, the, the Pulp Fiction soundtrack was the thing that became available before I could watch the film, because yeah. the film was so like forbidden and like 18, and but you could get the soundtrack, and so it was on the soundtrack, and it was like, yeah. but even as before you watched the film, you were familiar with the start of the film. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like already iconic before it was even out there. I was so late to Pulp like, Fiction, I couldn't believe they were quoting Scooby Snacks. I was just going to pop the fucking of this song. I remember watching Pulp Fiction kind of just sort of being... I saw Reservoir Dogs on Pirate when I was like 13, because that's what you did at 6. Oh, yeah. uh, and so I saw Reservoir Dogs, it's like, blew my mind. Because I was 13, imagine seeing something like Reservoir Dogs, you've not really seen any proper films before. Yeah, it's that was red was it? wasn't yeah. it? I can still really clearly remember um, the spoof that was on, the sketch show did a spoof of it. Uh, Mary Wax. Well, Mary Wax, yeah, it's just the tickly wibbly hands or something. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I remember watching the spoof and being like, oh god, that's Reservoir Dogs, I... Oh my god, that's and like trying to trying to yeah, yeah. understand the film from watching the spoof of it. I remember back at the time there was a I think Vox magazine did a thing called Avatar Dots, which was basically their version of a Tarantino soundtrack using things like the cramps and the slits yes. and stuff like that. With their own sort of stupid Tarantino dialogue in between. I've still got oh, that cassette tape. Oh, yeah. like, that's the sort of shit we had, you know, it was very Tar- Tarantino is very I think it was very much Derek Gurr at the time, wasn't well, it? Well, fuck, so, I mean, who's gonna be like you just think I look like this you feel like you're showing your age a little bit, but who's going to be the Tarantino next? Because who's going to be the, like the, the word Tarantino was like dangerous. Like, you remember like hearing him going, I watched a Tarantino film. It's like, oh my God, a Tarantino. And yeah. if he was linked with anything, just the word and like the, the, the sound like, of his name, Tarantino. It's like, oh, it's a Tarantino thing. And Tarantino's attached. It, it, even yeah, the yeah, dog yeah. shit that he was doing, like four rooms or stuff. It's like, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, Tarantino. Yeah. It's like, this is going to be dangerous. It's like, I can't imagine who the next, what the next, how that's yeah. going to take its form next. Really. And it was so exciting. And also, it was like every other film was advertised as like it's like a Tarantino, Tarantino film, like a, a Tarantino S on, yeah. on all the quotes, and you go like, well, I'll watch that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It was mind blowing. It's just a shame it's gone so wrong. Uh, in my opinion, you think so? Well, you know, I don't big fan since oh. it got long and boring. The Pulp Fiction is like the perfect kid in the toy shop nonsense. Right? You're going to go, Reservoir Dogs was great. I can do whatever I want. I'll do this. And it was yeah. like, hooray. And then it was a success. And they went, keep doing more of this. And he went, oh, you're not going to rein me in or tell me I should make it shorter or just no. edit, edit the script? or You're not going to tell me I shouldn't have a cameo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. This accent's all right. The yeah, Australian accent. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're the boss. <laughs> you're the boss, buddy. My accent's all right, isn't it, guys? <laughs> yes, Quentin. <laughs> I think the reason we still like him is because that's the dream for us. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah it's, well, it's funny, like, True Romance is such a great movie because it's like, although he didn't direct it, it's like the perfect Tarantino script is basically about some sort of essentially, which is like essentially about a teenager who works in the comic shop who gets to be the biggest badass in the world with his hooker with a heart of gold girlfriend and he takes on a drug dealing cartel and wins because he's awesome. You're going to go, I miss that Tarantino. Not the, I'm king of the literally, I'm king yeah. of the world, I do yeah. whatever I want. Listen yeah. to me. You know, right. it's very nature, that's the way it's yeah. going to go, isn't it? If anything, what you want is for him to become, in fact, what would be perfect Tarantino is like for him to become incredibly unpopular, to be thrown out of Hollywood, and then for him to become the comeback king because yeah. he's so good at making like he did for other people. The Tarantino, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, favorite, so for um, Travolta <laughs> and other people, like it would be, it'd be so good for him to have this incredible comeback where you go, fuck, he, you know, he's come back out of the wilderness, but he's because he's been embraced by the mainstream, that won't happen. I'd like him to just have to make it for like half a million pounds and make it under ninety minutes. You know, like I want to go back to just doing like a film yeah. rather than this nonce three hours of. Yeah, but he could have did that with Death Proof. Yeah, and that, that was, was terrible. Awful, wasn't yeah. it? God, Death Proof was a real low, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> it was a real low. Sure yeah. of all. 
I was <laughs> no, 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 it's really, it's really, it's really tense. It's, really t- it's not tense. It's just that I'm agitated because nothing's happened. <laughs> I had the, I had the worst death proof experience. One of the worst ever experience. Well, you were ever. sitting in the bathroom, <laughs> <seat of her. laughs> <laughs> One of my really good mates recently split up with his long-term girlfriend, and I was like, dude. We'll have a lance night, we'll get drunk, we'll watch Tarantino, it'll be brilliant. So we're in for the pub, we just like, I was like, oh, get him in! But like, after three points, he started to get bored in, and it was like, oh, you know, I really miss the dude. He was like, dude, Tarantino, let's go! <laughs> we we'll smuggled, we had a hip flask, I was like, we're gonna get on it! We got into cinema, we started to drink these hip flasks, and he, uh, in the trailers, he took his phone out and was like, she's texted, and she's, She's in Islington tonight. She wants to meet up. I'm gonna go. And I was like, dude! <laughs> dude. <laughs> and, like, and I was like, you shouldn't go. And he's like, okay, we'll watch the film. And then like, 10 minutes in, he just kind of just went, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> walked, just walked out of the cinema, popped back, and handed me his hip flask of gin. So I was just left on my own with <laughs> two hip flasks of gin. Just how he, like, failed on stopping him from getting over his girlfriend. <laughs> Watching Death Proof, you're like, this is weird. So I have, I have many same stories that are ultimately positive. <laughs> 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 I was stuck in the cinema on my own with two in the last <laughs> And he's fucked up. I see his girlfriend. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard. Can I just mention the first time you watched Pulp Fiction, uh, we watched it together in your bed together. Ah, perfect. As, <laughs> you can't hear on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> I watched Pulp Fiction Boy. for the first time uh, with the comedian Ash Frith in bed together. <laughs> 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 I wish there was more to that story than just... Uh, Any gin? Any gin? too young for gin. <laughs> just sex. <laughs> <laughs> Just proper <laughs> two young virgins just there. <laughs> a biography, <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it like in a not 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 playing on the fact was, was it like illicit that you were watching Paul Fiction? Because that's like, like I remember when we first watched it, it was like I should not be watching this film. I'm told that it's e- like this is a bad film to be watching. And I like, think uh, I don't know because one of us had always been quite cool, you know, about that sort of thing. So uh, we were see we were Christians, like uh, you know, we all love Christian everything, didn't we? Yeah, but not like a weird one. <laughs> I was allowed to watch films. <laughs> I wasn't told sketch- that Harry Potter was the devil or anything like that. It's why there are sketch groups you yeah. cult, cult vibe going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're going to I've got the script for you, which I bought because that's how much I liked it. I bought the script when it came out. So you're going to read the script, if that's all right. Uh, so I'm obviously not going to be in this because there's only two parts plus, uh, plus a waiter. So who's going to be pumpkin? Who's going to be honey bunny? Uh, can I be... Um... Oh. I don't know who I want to be. Go on. Take your pick. Young man or young woman, as they're called in the... Uh... <laughs> Shall I be a young woman? Okay, I'll be a young man. God, it was... Yeah. <laughs> it was so exciting, wasn't it? Yeah. When Tarantino started making... Well, it was meant to be a little well. The fact that that whole like, beginning scene was like... Just a conversation for seven minutes. Oh, it's yeah. like, especially now, because what I really hate now to see on this, is I think I really annoyed you now, is the foreshadowing in films now is so clumsy. Yeah. And tedious. He works like Transformers, and the bloke starts with him giving a speech. It's all going. And then I found, and these are my granddad's glasses. You're like, right, granddad's glasses can have something to do with the plot, because oh, I know we've mentioned yeah. granddad's glasses, <laughs> other than you can't write it. But it is, you got to go, much of Tarantino, the Tarantino stuff got very sort of tedious with everyone ripping him off, and it being lots of stuff about nothing. Yeah. But you kind of go, think about like, Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs, if it was made now, would it rely, there would be a thing at the end where it would rely entirely on whether anyone knew something about Madonna or not. Yeah, it had, Does it have to, to pay off. Mean something this would have to pay off. Have to pay off. No, just have them having a chat. Like, why not have a chat? Like, do do it. <laughs> be nineties movies where they just have a chat. It's a good place to have a chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I can love nineties movies. Anyway, I I haven't seen them. Can we do some editing? Because I haven't seen I haven't seen this for a long time. Now you'll be fine. This is much. This is much longer it's than quite, it's quite long. If you if you if you want God something's void, then help yourself. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll cool. happily do that. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Can we switch yes. up? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, All right, you, wow. you be young woman. Oh, oh She's got a sort of uh, Cindy Lauperish style voice. Wait, well, we done, this is all right. Can right, I just you switch script? Are you, just, are you still entertained? To quote, uh, <laughs> to, to, I used, I used to, to misquote. I are you still entertained? <laughs> <laughs> are you not entertaining? <laughs> <yet? laughs> what was going to be the alternative if they said that? <laughs> Oh yeah. Not in this bear, mate. 
Oh, it's the, di- it's the opening, opening dynasty. Yeah, the opening sorry, dynasty. Not being, not, uh, not, we're not going to get up a dance like track when we work on uh, yeah. The thing that makes me laugh with that story is everyone thinks that because he was filming something else, he can only do one line. He plays a pissed off waiter, so everyone thinks he was genuinely pissed off that he had one line in Pulp Fiction that wasn't acting, he was just annoyed. You know, that's not how films work. Like, <laughs> Steve Buscemi knows how to act. Leave it at home, yeah. fella. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's one line, but you were making another film, sorry. It's also in the, the incredible thing, oh, though, I know we're getting so boring now. I'm talking about Tarantino all the way. Yeah, right, so let's, let's get through this. Isn't it? You can do a man if you want. I'm no, sorry, yeah, it's not making it like, It made me feel like there was a club of actors that was. You know, like the fact that Buscemi appeared in Pulp Fiction and you're like he was in Reservoir Dogs and it's like you just felt like you were part of his yeah, life. to be fair it was the 90s Steve Buscemi was in every film <laughs> <laughs> he's even called Buscemi in uh, uh, El Mariette no uh, Desperado isn't he, like, is he? Uh, yeah he's called Buscemi because he knew because he wrote it to be Buscemi so like well, his character's called Buscemi ah oh. Right, trivia. here we go. <laughs> so, so now we have the opening to Pulp Fiction. Interior diner day. Forget it, it's too risky. I'm through doing that shit. You always say that. The same thing every time. Never again. I'm through. Too dangerous. I know, that's what I always say. I'm always right too. <laughs> it's like Manhattan, isn't it? I'm doing it. I'm going to do it as Woody Allen. That's a really sinister tone to the whole thing. But you can get it that in a day or two. Yeah, well, the days of me forget my own. And the days of me remembering have just forgotten. When you go go on like this, you know what you sound like? I sound like a sensible fucking man, that's what I sound like. You sound like a duck. Quite, 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 quite. Yeah, or take off. Because you're never going to have a hear it again. Because since I'm never going to do it again, you're never going to have to hear me quack about how I'm never going to do it again. Tonight? <sighs> Correct. I've got all tonight's quack. <laughs> Can I get any one more? <laughs> I still fucked it up. <laughs> Can I get anybody get any more coffee? Oh yes, thank you. I'm doing fine. <laughs> I mean, the way it is now, you're taking the same fucking risk as when you roll a bank. You take more of a risk. Banks are easier. Federal banks ain't supposed to stop you in any way during a robbery. They're insured. Why should they give a fuck? You don't even need a gun in a federal federal bank. I heard about this one bloke who walks into a federal bank with a portable phone. He gives the phone to the teller. The bloke on the other end of the phone says, we got this guy's little girl. If you don't give him all your money, we're going to kill her. Did it work? Fucking A, it worked. That's what I'm talking about. Knucklehead walks into a bank with a telephone. Not a pistol, not a shotgun, not a fucking phone. Cleans the place out. And they don't even lift a fucking finger. Did they hurt the little girl? I don't know. There probably never was a little girl in the first place. Well, well the, the point of the story isn't the little girl. The point of the story is they robbed the bank with a telephone. Hmm. You want to rob banks? I'm not saying I want to rob banks. I'm just illustrating if we did, it'd be easier than what we were doing. So, so you don't want to be a bank robber? No, all those guys are going to go down the same road, either dead or serving 20. No more liquor stores? What have we been talking about? Yeah, no more liquor stores. Besides, it ain't the giggle it used to be. Too many foreigners own the liquor stores. You get, you get. Vietnamese, <laughs> Koreans, Polish, they fucking don't <laughs> even speak English. You tell them empty out the register, they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. They make it too personal. We keep on, one of those cute motherfuckers gonna make us kill them. I'm not gonna kill anybody. I don't wanna kill anybody either. But they'll probably put us in a situation where it's us or them. If it's not the gooks, it's these old fucking Jews who's owned the store for 15 fucking generations. You've got Grandpa Irving sitting behind the counter with a fucking magnum in his hand. Try walking into one of those places with nothing but a phone. See how far that gets you. Fuck it. Forget it. We're out of it. Yeah, well, then what? Day jobs? Not in this life. What then? Garçon, coffee. This place. <laughs> Garçon means boy. This place, a coffee shop? What's wrong with that? Nobody ever robs restaurants. Why not? Bars, liquor stores, gas stations. You get your red blind off sticking up one of them. Restaurants, on the other hand, you catch them with their pants down. They're not expecting to get robbed. Not as expected anyway. I bet you'd cut down the hero factory in a place like this. Correct, same as banks. These places are insured. Manager, he don't give a fuck. He's just trying to get you out the door before you start plugging the diners. Waitresses, fucking forget it. No way they're taking a bullet for the register. Bus boys, 
Some wet pack getting paid a dollar fifty an hour. I really gives a fuck. You're stealing from the owner. Customers sitting there with food in their mouths. They don't know what's going on. One minute they're having a Denver omelette. Next minute someone's sticking a gun in their face. See, I've got the idea. Last thing story stuck up. Remember all the customers kept coming in. Yeah. Uh huh. And you got the idea of taking their wallets. Uh huh. And that was a good idea. Thank you. Made more from the wallets than we did from the register. Yes, we did. A lot of people <laughs> came to restaurants. A lot of wallets. Pretty smart, huh? Pretty smart. I'm ready. Let's do it right now, right here. Come on. All right. Same as last time, remember? You're crowd control. I handle employees. Mm hmm. <laughs> I love, you. I love you, pumpkin. I love you, honey bunny. Everybody be cool. This is a robbery. <laughs> Any of you fucking pricks. Everybody be cool. This is a robbery. Any of you fucking pricks move and I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you. Rob in the hell, rob in the pants, all wet, up on Scooby Snacks. So, uh, so uh, moving on, have you got a, a, a kind of miscellaneous things or any film you've ever seen? So, next, the next scene that you would like to choose? We are the three amigos. Three amigos. Three amigos. Three amigos. Three amigos. Another film like I think. Uh, not not quite as good as the Italian job in terms of classic, classic stages, but it's a film you watch as a kid that's really funny and thankfully still funny when you watch yeah, it as a grown up. Damn it, it's There's brilliant. so many 80s films that do not hold up, Spaceballs, for example. Yeah. Uh, but Three Amigos is, is is actually a lot funnier when you watch it as a grown up. You didn't get, you watched, you, got, you pretty much didn't get any of the jokes in your yeah. <laughs> Because it's not it's not a parody really. Like it, it it's in a genre, but it's its own film. Like you know, like it's not it, it's not trying to spoof Westerns as such, but it plays with the all the tropes of yeah. Westerns. Also, one of the all-time great comedy plots, which has since been done again, is that like oh, Galaxy, Galaxy Quest, Quest yeah, yeah, is yeah. the same film. Yeah, absolutely, and it's like uh, it's made with a real like. In fact, it, it's something that's true of a lot of things that are made nowadays, where it, it's made with a real love of its genre. So it's not it's not trying to spoof or attack it. It's made within a genre. Um, but it's made with a real love of its genre. It never does disservice to its genre. And also setting it back sort of, you know, in actual cowboy times theoretically because they're silent movie stars and stuff. Yeah. It works because then you're not making any weird satire on modern Hollywood or, you know, you're doing like essentially a, it's how you can do a Western. It's really clever. Like the sort of the premise is really simple, but sort of quite clever when you think about it. Yeah. And the casting of like, like both Chuck Chase and Steve Martin and Martin Short, in fact, the casting is incredible for like, they are like silent movie characters. Like they're, they're so physical that actually like it really plays to their strengths. And so you you buy into it completely. And then the jokes are so good and they keep on coming. They all play a different kind of vain Hollywood stereotype. Yeah. But like, it's, they're all playing like vain, vain assholes, but in very different, very funny ways. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And just, yeah, and also, the, like, yeah, it also, it looks dirt, like all the Mexican stuff. Not the, but it looks, it's not like some weird, Patronizing, but it's like the old West looks horrible. Like yes. these Hollywood superstars sent to like the middle of nowhere, it looks horrible. You know, in fact, they're wearing these ridiculous costumes from movies. You know, yeah. it's, it's great. Like, <laughs> I it's great, yeah. And, and like again, like a genuine villain who really holds up. Like when he when he turns nasty, it works. Yeah, it's wow. Like, wow. Wow. Like, wow. Like, it, it, it really plays. Yes, you know, it, do I have a blip? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, do you know anything about foreplay? No, good. Neither does he. It's like there's, a, there's like a, the best bit of direction we got from the, the, the last thing we filmed was the director like the straighter you play it, the funnier it becomes. And that, I think like it was the best thing anyone ever said was like if you believe what you're a doing, a direction we ignore. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like if you, if you play something like it's real, it becomes funnier. And the Three Amigos plays itself like it's a real film. Yeah, yeah. It plays itself like it's a real western. The villain, even though he's funny and full of jokes, but he's still a real villain. <laughs> That's it. Real bullets. It's yeah, so yeah. Oh, 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 This is 
is what we're up against. Right. And when they when they turned and they're like, you know, they play that thing of like, this is it. There's a line in the sand that we, you know, what have we got to go back to and stuff. There are genuine goosebump moments. Yeah. Like there's genuine kind of like they there's a feel good factor that's genuine in that film. But also it's like it's one of the great. It's actually one of Jimmy Chase's best things because Jimmy Chase now even knows he's a bit of a dick or like theoretically yeah. he's a bit of a dick, but and obviously like, but like he's you know the two lines where he just you know the two the two proper Jimmy Chase bits where he says uh, do you anything besides Mexican food? <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to kiss me on the veranda? On the list would be fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, it was a part, but, you know, obviously written for Jimmy Chase, but he's so yeah, yeah. you know it comes in so well. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So this is the same. Yeah, there's so, actually, it's worse. You could pick lots of scenes. There's so many classic bits like the yeah. uh, when they get fired and they break in and go. This is this is the uh, this is the uh, singing version of Invisible Story. Who do you want? Who do you want? Who do you want to pick? Well, who are we? I think this is going to be terrible because this is, is going to sell a lot about your your personal dynamic. Yeah, that's it. My first thing is Ben's next. That's that's good actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben's Martin Short. Ned, Lucky, Dusty. Yeah, I think that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, seriously, I'm Martin Short. <laughs> <laughs> it's a podcast where we can see how different you are. Physically yeah. <laughs> speaking. That's, that's definitely yeah, how yeah, I yeah, am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a scene in Bush. I should probably sort of just show it to you. So uh, I won't do space right, directions. Yeah, but just, so yeah. basically, the, the thing is, they've got a riddle. They've got to find the scene in Bush. And then do this, this, this chant. And then we'll get the invisible swords. But it will tell them where they've got to go. <laughs> so there's a scene. But they come through. The three amigos running the horseback through a gully as they go through. A singing bush can be heard singing. Shall we come around the mountain when she comes? Shall we play down the mountain when she comes? Excuse me. Are you the singing bush? <laughs> Let me talk to him. Excuse us. Are you the singing bush? Hello. Hey. Hello. Are you the Excuse us. Hey. No, forget it. My guess is this is the singing bush. Let's go summon the invisible sword. Summon the invisible sword. We can't believe I'm doing this. Now, let me see here. We both have to fire one shot in the air, say the magic chant, and then the invisible swordsman will appear. Then opens a notebook and looks at his chants. Then pass the notebook to Lucky, who checks his chants. Farley, 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 Dusty. Uh, Lucky throws it over to Dusty, who reads it nonchalantly. Connect! Hell! Hello! We hear a scream and a thud. Dusty is not fired into the air. Great! You killed the invisible swordsman! Is that alright? How was I supposed to know where he was? You were supposed to fire up! We won't fire up if I never met a six-year-old! Now we're never going to find out Guapos. He was the only one who could show us the way. We're lost. Suddenly an airplane flies overhead. Wait, that's a Tubman 601. <laughs> we saw it in the airflow. And it's going to do El Guapos. Mount up! It means get on your horses. <laughs> <laughs> See! <laughs> Uh, so moving on to your next scene that you that you're a big fan of. Uh, I'd love to know. They can't have been in the script though, so no, no, Oh yeah, there's definitely well, her far is obviously reference to two brains, isn't it? The Doctor Hafar. <laughs> Uh, Which well, is so just the movie for Steve Martin. My Little Buttercup is one of the great. That's not oh, yeah. so funny. No, obviously that would not work in the podcast. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has the sweetest smile. The smile. The smile. Also that um, the song when they sing a lot of to Ned. Yeah. At the end, good night, Ned. Oh god, damn it, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. So your next scene you've chosen, another miscellaneous scene, is uh, tell us. Oh, it's the Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski. Everyone loves the Big Lebowski. Which again, seminal film for us. 
Yeah. 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 Ye
Is it? Have you ever seen it in the film? I always, I, I always see it. So they, they, like, they've dubbed him. They've, yeah, they've re-dubbed him out. Like all of his lines, he's like, he's yelling and he's completely shit. I'll, I'll try and get Sam Lewis. I'll try and be out of sync. Maybe he wasn't Should we get Sam at the bottom? Do you want to, do you want to put him out of sync? I'm more than to be an out of sync. Out of sync. Terrible. I'll be a few out. I'll be the woman. Okay. okay. I'll do narration as well for you. Cool. Uh, so basically, the house, the dude and water are pulling up in front of a dilapidated house, sitting by a scrub on a scrubby lot. Parked in concrete in front of the house is a brand new red Corvette. Oh, fuck me, man. The kids already spent the money. Hardly, dude. A new bed. The kids still got out of 96 to 97,000, depending on the options. Wait in the car, Danny. It's the front door. Water rings the bell. It's opened by a matronly Spanish woman. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Pilar. My name is Wallace Soljek. We spoke on the phone. This is my associate, Jeffrey Nabarski. Yes? <laughs> May we, uh, we want to talk about little Larry. May we come in? Yes? They enter into the living room and stand, looking about as Pilar calls up the stairs. Larry, sweetie, that man is here. There is a rhythmic compressor sound. Walter places it and nudges the dude. At the other end of the living room, a man lies on something that looks like a hospital gurney with its midsection enclosed in a motorized stainless steel bubble. It is an iron lung, artificially breathing with a distinct... Hissing in and out. <laughs> That's him, dude. And good day to you, sir. <laughs> Sit down, please. Thank you, ma'am. Does he, uh, is he still riding? Uh, no, no, he has heart problems. Uh-huh. I just want to say, sir, that we're both enormous on a personal level. Branded, especially the early episodes, has been a source of, uh... Inspur! There are footsteps on the stairs. Larry, a 15 year old, looks at the two men. Uh, sit down, sweetie. These are the policemen. No, 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 man. I I didn't mean to give the impression that we're police exactly. We're hoping that it will not be necessarily called police, but that is up to little Larry here. Isn't it, Larry? Walter pops the latches on his attache case and takes out the homework, which is now in a Ziploc bag. He holds it at arm's length, displaying it to Larry. Is this your homework, Larry? Larry does not respond. Is this your homework, Larry? Look, man, did you... Dude, please. Is this your homework, Larry? Just ask him if it's his car, man. Is this yours, Larry? Is this your homework, Larry? Is the car out front yours? Is this your homework, Larry? We know it's his fucking homework, Walter. Where's the fucking money, you little <laughs> brat? Look, Larry. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Vietnam? Oh, for Christ's sake, Walter. You're going to have a world of pain, son. You know that this is your homework. You know you stole a car. And the fucking money. And the fucking money. And we know that this is your homework, Larry. You're going to kill your father, Larry. Ah, this is pointless. All right, plan B. You might want to watch out the front window then, Larry. He's heading for the door. The dude, puzzled, rises to follow him. <laughs> this is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass, Larry. We are outside. Water is striding down the lawn with his attaché case like an enraged encyclopedia salesman without looking back at the dude who follows. Fucking language problem, dude. He pops the dude's trunk, flings in the briefcase, takes out a tire iron. Maybe he'll understand this. He's walking over to the Corvette. You see what happens, Larry? Smash! He smashes the crowbar into the windshield, which shatters. You see what happens? Crash! He takes out the driver's window. This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass! Lights are going on in houses down the street. Dissing dogs bark. Here's what happens, Larry! Smash! Here's what happens! Fuck a stranger in the ass! Smash! A man in a sleepless t-shirt and boxer shorts has run over behind water and grabs him from behind... Put on a back swing of the crowbar. What the fuck are you doing, man? He wrestled the crowbar away from the stalted water. I just bought this fucking car last week! The water cringes for the enraged Mexican. Huh? Um, huh? The man looks about wild. I man. kill you, man! I, I kill your fucking car! He runs over to the dude's car. Oh, no, 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 that's not... <laughs> crash, crash. I fucking kill your car! Crash! I kill your fucking car, man! I kill your fucking car! <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They write like and, uh, it, it, like they write scenes of comedy with and you have no idea where the comedy came from. Well if you think about that scene It's like John Goodman at the end of Barton Fink, uh, I'll tell you about the life of the boy just shooting holes in people's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. doors in people's legs. It's such a funny it's such a horrible scene, but it's such a funny scene. And you would never I mean you read it on paper and see it's funny, but yeah. it's 
And it's massively about Goodman as well. Yeah. He's so good. He's so funny. He's so, so good. Man. He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's this comedy of no, yeah. no um, traceable origin. Where did it come from? Like, where, did, where, where did that scene come from? Who well, would imagine that you, scene? You'd never believe it. Uh, I actually heard from a friend that it came from an experience. We <laughs> 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 remember the famous story of the Code Brothers going mad and shooting people in the uh, hotel hallway. <laughs> Paid dividends in the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we come to your favourite last scene, or certainly scene, spoiler alert, uh, for any films there. What's your favourite ending to any film? Uh, it's the multiple endings to uh, the first Wayne's World movie. Yes, which, Wayne's World. Again, it's not, like, I realise now we've picked films that are basically sort of sketch comedy movies. <laughs> like Pulp, Pulp Fiction, Three Amigos, Wayne's World and Big Lebowski are movies that you could take out bits and go, well, that's a little sketch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Flea comes around your house with a ferret. That's a funny, <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny scene for any, any oh, other a normal movie. Saturday night for me. Yeah. Um, Guy gets fucked in the ass wearing a gimp mask. Exactly, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, I thought that was three amigos. It's more a comedy of manners. So this is the end, uh, obviously, Wayne's World was a great film, wasn't it? It's great. Wayne's World was like, again, like uh, it's kind of, it was so inspiring, I think, for us. Like, uh, we only realised later on, we look and go, oh, that was massive. But what you feel like is you're watching mates fuck around. It, it feels like you're watching mates be given a Hollywood film, and it's like, go and make a film with this thing that you love and you like fucking around with. And it, that's exactly what they communicated. It was like, we're having a ball here, and we're going to do whatever we can do with it and the more money really summed that up like it was the thing of going we, we want to do this and we want to do that and we're going to do this and they let them do it and it's like that's how that felt and also it's not a needy comedy in that like they'll do a big bit about the Burma Shirley which I know was a big movie in the, in the States but when I watched it I just found that scene where they do the recreate the, the opening of the Burma Shirley with the Milwaukee Beer Factory I just thought this is so weird it's funny yeah. so it does like a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of when you're trying to write comedy now they're like yeah this is a reference I'm not sure everyone's going to get yeah. Fuck, it doesn't ever really matter no. if you do it with enough pictures, you can come to you. Yeah, it was just that you, you talk to you know, British comedy people about, no one will get that, and you go, yeah, do you watch Family Guy? I spent yeah. most of my time going, hey, Lois, this reminds me of that thing that no one in England will understand. <laughs> uh, and then you go, that's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really I can kind yeah. of fill in the gaps. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. But the one, thing that, yeah. the one thing you really buy into, it's a similar thing to, I was having a conversation the other day about like, uh, someone who, who couldn't comprehend the success of Mrs. Brown's voice. And it's like, the, the script is obviously like what it is. It's like, you know, the, the most rude one kind of script. But the thing you can't fake is the love of making it. And they absolutely communicate that. Like the love that they have for each other is like people who know each other are making a thing. And their enthusiasm for what they're doing and their love of it. And like, I feel like it's what we've always tried to do with our live stuff is like, the joy of what we're doing to try and communicate that to our audience. And like, I think Wayne Gold's Succeeded so much in that, like you can tell that they love so much what they're doing, and it's it's a, it's a real tightrope act of like not wanting to be smug and self-referential, um, and, and 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 like not trying to fall down on that side. And I think in ways well, they absolutely got the balance right. You know, in the first Austin Power thing he did as well. Yeah. I think sometimes he falls on the other side. You know, but like. But when he's good, the guru. When, 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 when my mind is good, he is a master at that. Of, yeah. of just enough of a raised eyebrow to say, "Fucking hell, look at what we're doing here!" But isn't it great? Oh, we love so when you think it came from like Saturday Night Live, so they're basically yeah. talking about like at most five minutes of a sketch, sort of yeah. every now, you know, weekly. But you know, it's like the Blues Brothers. You actually got characters you can actually flesh out to a whole movie because yeah. the sketch is not the important thing. Like. So yeah, they're in their basement, there's people who run this thing in their basement, because, well, great, then we'll have them live in the real world, and, you know, like, yeah, you can actually flesh those characters out, which you can't do a lot of other sketches, as I as said, I've ever found to their peril. Yeah, 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 yeah. The ladies' man, for example, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine, but no, no Wayne's World. In terms well, of like, well, it's also that, because it, it was a, it was a big comeback movie for Rob Lowe, who'd had yeah. a bit of a sort of, you know, some sort of sex scandal, hadn't he? Yeah, the sex tape. Yeah. When, um, back, back when there was no internet, that's how, that's how that, widespread it was. That's how big the scandal was. But <laughs> now he's like a big, you know, like now in Parks and Rec and stuff like that, you, you prove, he's, he's a very, very, he's very, very good at comedy. Yeah. Does he play again? It's that thing that he plays it so straight, he plays straight movie bands. Especially guy. in like Wayne's World Two, which is another you know not to get on because you know, we're not doing Wayne's World Two, but you know having Christopher Walken play, especially Christopher Walken in a way that no one asked him to play like a, a straight sort of 
not sinister since Chris Walker, but like just hardcore Chris Walker and Kim Basinger as the, yeah. the sex part who is, you know, it's like it's really clever. You yeah. know, like, and again, it is that thing of kids going crazy in, in movie land. It's like your guys, Wayne and Garth, got set free in LA and we've got go and make a film. So, like, the, the, for me, the, the, the most incredible, it was the first one I'd ever seen this kind of incredible joke where. Wayne swaps out the actor and brings in Charlton Heston. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> holy fuck, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. do that! And yeah. you just did that! It's it's like, like, yeah, there's loads of them. It, you know? It's like when he opens the door and there's all people doing yeah, Kung Fu and he's like, oh, it's got this one. And it's like, it, that yeah, feels like wishful film. It's exactly, and that's it, man. And you kind of, you really were buying into him as like your, yeah. your mate. And, and talking to the audience, film. which often is really tiresome, yeah. but actually, if you do it right, it's not tiresome. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, you know, everything, yeah, exactly, everything about it is like, Pitch perfectly. Yeah, really yeah. And you know, you know, the thing I always like about Wayne's was, you know, when they're doing the bit on the car roof, and he goes, "Do you have a fancy a bugs when you dress up as a lady?" <laughs> they laugh. That was because that was just that was just so that was essentially fans. Uh, that uh, David Carvey came up with between takes waiting for the helicopter for the way to the radio and Mike Myers genuinely laughed. That's Mike Myers genuinely laughing. Oh, genuinely oh, laughing. Right. Yeah, there's, there's, there's another n- not quite so fun moment where um, David Carvey hadn't learned the words to Bohemian Rhapsody, <laughs> didn't know that the reverse shot was going to be used. So there's a bit where he's just kind of going eh, 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 with his mouth and not mouthing ma- 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 along, and then was furious when the film came out, so they used the scene of him going, yeah, yeah, clearly not mouthing the words of it. And I thought that was so funny. Yeah, that's really but funny. Wayne, yeah. But I love the idea that Wayne knows all the words, yeah. of course he does, yeah, yeah, and Garth yeah. sort of knows one in every three words. No, no, that's exactly, yeah. it feels so perfect. And yeah. the, uh, the, yeah, apparently uh, David Carr, the actually had genuine mouth trouble with doing the overbite so much, like in one go, because obviously he does it like, one sketch a week, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, doing it for a whole movie it was like he actually had to put he had to go home and put like ice on his jaw to look wow. like, he fucked his jaw up. In much the same way that um, Tim McKinnery had uh, couldn't get his Twitch, couldn't get up, couldn't lose his Twitch after Blackout yeah. like, for, for months. Because he did it so long he Ugh. developed an actual Twitch. It's like man versus food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tom as well. <laughs> so keep it to the right. So if you remember Wayne's well, basically he's got Cassandra as his girlfriend. She wouldn't yeah. mind, I um, guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he basically they hack into this like Mr. Big sort of big shots thing to the event. Weirdly though, well, I, I do find that a bit strange that like to, to break her as an artist they would do a cover. Do you know what I mean? Like, is, it, is it ballroom blitz? Ball yeah, 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 what was it? The Adventurous or something? The line. What's the one? Which is the, uh, the Relic, relic Hunter. Hunter. I was yeah. going to say it's like the Tomb Raider, but yeah, the Relic Hunter. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. also got Lindsay Booth in it. There you go. Good song. The yeah. Relic Hunter song. The Relic, relic Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. You didn't hear the E on there. I was really worried. <laughs> oh my God. Essentially, it was. Well, I realise this has got about this has got a ton of people in, hasn't it? Yeah. So, so yeah, they change yeah. different yeah. different scenes. So uh, I'll tell you what. Shall I? I'll be Frankie. You be Frankie, uh, yeah. Um, I'll be I'll be Cassandra. Ash, do you want to come back and do a part? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ash, that's great. Ash, um, come back. I'm gonna be Cassandra, and I'm gonna do my least offensive version of the accent. Okay. <laughs> There's no. Oh, so we established we established a perfect really movie. Just so you know. Yeah. Just so you know, it's not gone. racist if it's an impression of a person. That's true. It's only if you think that's how all those. Um, are. And who's gonna be Benjamin? You should you be Benjamin, right? Um, no, because they talk to each other. I'm Ash should be Benjamin. You'd be, yeah. you'd be Benjamin Ash. And, and Benjamin. we need we need a, a Stacey for that first one. Well, no, we can just we just, we'll, I'll just throw that in because we'll, I'm doing I'll do I'll do miscellaneous. Okay, okay, okay. Miss, okay yeah. Miss okay. miscellaneous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe for radio call. If I'm going for a Yeah. Um. So Wayne's World. Well. So basically, they've done their cover of Ballroom Blitz. Uh, big oh, can I just sorry? To, 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 we we stole this for uh, the finale of our sitcom Balance. Like our, our final yeah, episode yeah. of series two was the roll the dice roll. Effectively, yeah. like inspired by the end yeah. of this film. So. I did a studio warm up for that. You did <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The gang's made it together, wasn't it? In studio warm up. I was thinking it was weird that you'd seen it. I was thinking. I watched the episode in Studio Warner for, don't you worry. I don't make that funny. It's kind of guy I am. No, so they've just 
it's like a ballroom blitz. He's done ballroom blitz, uh, and it's finished, and then they basically packed into his private on yeah. car thing. So he turns up, he's finished. Hi, I'm Frankie Sharp. I saw your performance in my limo. I've seen a lot of acts in my day, and although you are very beautiful, I just think it's the wrong time. I'm sorry. You screwed my career! I always knew you were small time. Wayne, I'm pregnant, that's why I've been so moody. Whoa, look, fire, let's get out of here! House burns to the ground, we see a burnt Wayne carrying a burnt car out in his arms. My God! Why? We are suddenly in the beautiful beach resort with Cassandra and Benjamin. Last night was the most incredible night of my life. You were terrific. He turns to the camera. You didn't really think she'd end up with Wayne, did you? <laughs> Wayne and Garth slide into shock. Yes, if. As if we'd end the movie like that, sure. Let's do the scooby doo ending. Good call. Ballroom <laughs> <laughs> Blitz. Hi, I'm Frankie Sharp. I saw your performance in my limo. Whoa, we got through. Well, that wraps it up. But there's one last thing. Let's just see who you really are, mister. Wayne rips off Benji's face marks reveal. Why, it's old man Weathers, the guy who runs the haunted amusement park. And I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for you snoopy kids. <laughs> Good one, Shaggy. <laughs> yeah, excellent Scooby-Doo ending. Yeah, but I think we should do the mega happy ending. That's doable. Hi, I'm Frankie Sharp. I should have performed in my little. I must tell you, it was terrific. In fact, I think it's so good, I'm going to give you a six album deal. See you in my office. I love you, Wayne. I love you, Cassandra. I love you, Gus. I love you, Dream Woman. <laughs> you know, ever since I did your show, kids are looking at me in a whole new way. I love you, man. And I love you. Because I've learned the botanic love can exist between two grown men. And I've learned something too. I've learned that flawless profile, a perfect body, the right clothes, and a great car can get you far in America. Almost to the top. But it can't get you everything. Isn't it great that we're all better people? Fished in! Fished in! Right, excellent movie, all right. Good luck. Well, that's all the time we had for our movie. We hope you found it entertaining, whimsical, and yet relevant, with an underlying revisionist conceit that belied the film's emotional attachments to the subject matter. I just hoped you didn't think it sucked. <laughs> okay, okay. So thank you for coming. Good night, and party on! Party on, Wayne. Party on, Gar. Fade to black. Fade in to Wayne and Garth on the couch looking at magazines. You know, I don't think anyone's going to tell us when to leave. <laughs> yeah, good call, Carl. <laughs> I bet we're just going to sit here, and when they're finished, they'll fade to black. Fade to black. I can't believe they did that. I told you. See! <laughs> it really, really sticks in the toy shop. It sticks in the toy shop. Yeah. It's the best place for kids to be. <laughs> yeah. A round of applause for Pappy! Oh! Thank you very much for coming. If you enjoyed this, do listen to the other podcasts I have up on either YouTube or iTunes, wherever you're listening to it. Uh, and please uh, check out the marvellous work by Pappy's and Ash Frith, who are on the show today. Uh, that's it. I'm Richard Sands. This is Richard Sands by the Movie Podcast. Thank you and good night! Yeah! <laughs>